All right, let's make an animated font image for an OLED display. And um, when we choose the font, that's what we're going to see. So what happens here is you want to make a new document that's 128 pixels wide. And let's just make it astronomically long at 10,000 pixels. We'll crop it later, but we want plenty of room to work. I'm going to fill this thing with black background and I'm going to take our slice tool and I'm also going to be zooming in and zooming out like with hotkeys. So you won't see me doing that, but zooming in, you want to right click this thing and divide it into horizontal slices, 32 pixels each and click OK. 32 pixels is your slice height, right? Because our OLED is 128 by 32. And we want a bunch of frames so it can play this image just like a film reel. You know, it's one frame at a time, top to bottom. Then I'm gonna animate some text. I'm not gonna draw on here or anything right now, just wanna take some words. The name of the font is Liquid Static by Blue Force Company, who has made a new font to be included in the Profi OS default download package. And that will be coming out soon. Right now, I am just fiddling around with making a cool animation for the font. So I know static is not spelled right. That gets fixed later. Right now, I'm just gonna pick something liquidy and I'm gonna pick something staticky for font. Yeah, that works. Cool. So the idea here is I want to have the liquid kind of drip in one letter at a time. And I want to have static be, I don't know, somehow staticky. And I'm going to fast forward through a bunch of this now because it's just trial and error. What I was figuring out how to offset things and how to drop it down and Part two will kick in and it's a little lengthy, but hey, teaches you how you can animate stuff. The tools we're going to be using here very much are offset, uh, you're duplicating layers, and then offsetting the next one. This is how you make the animation happen. So what I got going here is my first layer I made was liquid static, right? So let's say this is the <clears throat> the thing I want to have the liquid drip in like it's liquid and then somehow figure out make static kind of like staticky. Uh, nope. Oh, I rasterized it already. Oh, yeah. So that's a thing. You got to select your text that you want to change your font. Boom. Right. And that was too skinny. So I picked bold. And I came up with, it, it ends up like that. And so then once you have that, you need to, in order to do stuff to it, because it's a, see, it's a text layer over here. You need to rasterize it so it's basically like an image. And then you can screw around with it. Uh, so you go to help. I just, you know, there's so many things in these menus. I'm a big cheater. I just go to help. I type what I want. And then it gives it to me right here. So I go to rasterize type. Right here, boom. So now, see that is not a text layer anymore. Now it's an image and I can move it, I can scale it, and you can do whatever you want, just like any other image. Okay, so now undo is the other thing I end up doing a lot, uh, which is actually step backwards. So I'm in the process of dropping each letter in and the plan here is I'm gonna have it move five pixels frame and I'm gonna start the next letter kind of as the first one's coming in and then they will settle and it'll end up saying what we see in the top I'm using the initial type <clears throat> to grab individual letters to move right so I start the first letter five pixels in it comes down, it's at 10, it comes down, it's at 15. On the third frame of that letter, being in the frame, I start the next letter. And that's it. 
So that's my plan. I'm going to see how it comes out. So I got up to Q, uh, and then I started the U. So you see, you got to move down. So here's where the I starts here, and then I got one, two, three. So now I'm starting the Q. Uh, and then once it settles, I duplicate it just down like a ton. Oh, and the other thing here, so you can show or remove these slices. So when you zoom out pretty far, like you can't really see what's going on anymore because this slice info is in the way. So you go to help, you type slices and you show slices. Check mark is on, turn it off by just clicking that. And now I can just see what I got. So I'm gonna zoom back in and pick up where I left off. So I got the U in and it drops in and it settles and then it stays. Okay, great. So we're up to the I, right? And I'm going to turn my slices back on so I can see what's going on. And the I, if this is the first frame, right? Here's one. So this is where offset counting starts coming in. Typically, like once I'm duplicating stuff and just moving it down, I want to do an offset of 32 pixels um, once I get the initial one. But dropping them in... I want to come down. Now, remember I said I'm offsetting them by five each of those four frames that it comes in. So for those four frames, it's got to be 37. And then once it settles, it's back just straight up 32. Now, the command shortcut keys here, unfortunately, it doesn't say it here, which is weird. But duplicate layer is, I'm on a Mac, so it's command J might be control J in Windows world, I don't know. And to do the offset, there's two things. One is the offset settings, and this is where you set your amount. Now, if you wanted to move things left to right, you would set a horizontal offset for as you... <clears throat> All right, so then to execute the offset, the hotkey is F. Command F. So basically I'm going to do a bunch of Command J, Command F, Command J, Command F. And each time I do that, it's going to duplicate what I got, paste it, because um, that's what duplicate does, and then it's going to offset it. And then I got a copy in the new spot where I want. And then you wind up with all these layers. But for now, I'm going to merge these because I'm done with them for now, I think. You can always undo and step backwards and get back to when you, before you merge layers. But for now, I'm going to simplify up. This is my main, I mean, the background is the black background, right? This is a, this is like my safety is my initial type. And I'm just never touching that. This one is where I'm pulling letters one at a time, right? So I just finished U. So I got my eraser tool and I got it set to pencil mode because if it's on brush, you get like a, well, it helps it. You have to select the layer you want to affect, obviously. You know, it gives you like a gradient at the end and it'd be like scrubbing it like, a, I don't want that. Uh, you want pencil because that's a hard, hard cut, you know. Um, so I'm going to go back and I'm done with you. So this is kind of like my, uh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm not on the right layer. Okay, there we go. U is done. So I'm done with that. Now I'm going to take the I. So what I want to do is take what's here. I'm going to duplicate this right in place. And we're going to call it I. And I've learned that capitals helps to know what you're saying. And this is pronounced I. This way I know it's an I and not an L. Okay, so here we go. A lot of talking, not a lot of doing. Once I start going, maybe it makes sense. So here's how it works. I'm going to take the I, right? I just made this. I'm going to hide this. This is like my working layer, this guy, right? That's where I'm choosing my layers. So I'm done with that. I'm going to get rid of it so I don't mess around. I only need the I out of this. So I'm zooming in, and I'm going to get rid of everything that is not I with the pencil eraser. Now I got an I. And I need to put my first I, if you remember what I said, my plan is the third instance of the previous letter. So 
Here's the first U, here's the second U, here's the third U. That's in slice 11. And I'm using slice one as a template, like just a work area. I'll end up cutting it off, cropping it off later. And this will be my first frame. Uh, so since it's on 11 and I'm here, when you do some math, I'm going to take my offset to 320. And I say, okay. And it moved it to the third instance of you, which is what I want. However, I just got to make sure that I leave my stuff behind. Okay, I did. So great. So here we are on the first frame, but I don't want it exactly offset 320, in this case, 32. This is supposed to start only five up. So I'm just going to move it up manually. Uh, and I'm not going to drag it because there's a risk like I go off. And you don't want to do that. You can hold shift. Yeah. And that keeps it um, in line. You can also just use the arrow keys, which is what I was going to do, but I like shift and I'm starting it one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm confirming. Is this the third U? Yes. One, two, three. So I've dipped it in five. Now I got all this extra in the previous frame. That's fine for the moment. Let's just place them. Okay, so it's five here. Now the next one down, I want it to be five more. So it's 32 plus five. So I got to go to my offset. I got to set it to 37 because that's the number. And it immediately did it. So I'm going to undo because I didn't want it. I want to leave a copy. So I'm going to command J to duplicate my layer. Then I'm going to do the offset. Now I got one where I want. And I'm going to do it again. J, F. And it moved it down another five. And then J, F. I moved it down another five. And do J, F. And that's where I want it to land. So now that it's there, the rest, I don't want to do that additional five. So I'm changing my offset back to 32. And I say, OK. And I undo because it moves it right away. I'm not ready yet. Stop doing it for me, but that's what it does. So I undo one step, the move, and now I manually duplicate with J and paste with that, uh, paste with the offset on F. And I'm going to literally do that a bunch of times until, see, here we go. I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to slices. I'm going to turn them off and I'm just going to bring it down to here with the same moves. Command. Holding command and just doing J, F, J, F, J, F, J, F. Isn't that uh, magical? A couple more times. Boom, boom. And then that's the last one. All right, so I got an eye everywhere I want. I'm going to turn my slices back on so I can see my spots. And I know that this is too high, right? So we'll go back to the eraser tool. I got to find this layer. Okay, that was my first eye layer. So I'm coming down here now. Of course, this is upside down. I'm working up, you know, each new layer shows up higher, whereas it's, you know, it's inverted. So the first one is here. It's my first version. So I want that selected and I'm going to just whoop, clean off everything above that frame. And the next guy, him, Make that active, and I'm going to get rid of that. And then the next one, just a little bit. Now, this is in the clear, so I don't need to do anything else. And I got all my eyes are in place, and they dropped in. So I'm now going to select the first and the last layer, including whatever this was. I think this was the last L. I don't know why, but I'm just going to merge these layers so I don't have a huge list and go get my next one. I'm going to see what frame I'm dropping it on. This is where the eye is at its third spot. I'm going back up. I'm going back up. Okay. Here's one, two, three. So 13. So we do the math and we say 32. Remember the top frame doesn't count because that's my workspace. So it's really 12. So I'm just going to do 32 by 12. It's 384. I'm going to set my offset 
384. And that is not cool. I don't know what just happened. I shifted a whole bunch of stuff. It's not what I wanted to do. Oh, this is my everything. <laughs> this is my, I just moved my merged everything. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. I forgot to go get my new letter. So this is my working thing. I did I, right? So let's make this active. I'm done with I. This is the last drop-in letter. So I'm going to work with D. So I'm going to duplicate this. I could do Command J. I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to call it D. Okay, so now I got D only. I'm just going to get D only going. Do, 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 erase this crap. Great. There's my D. And that's the one that I want to offset now. So I'm going to just do my set it, right? I think I set it. Yep. And I'll let it do it on its own when I clicked OK. And there it is in the third frame of I. Perfect. Uh, except that's not where I want it. So I'm going to move it. And I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag it. Oh, that didn't work. It shifted over. See, that's not cool. Undo. Step backwards, step backwards, step forward. Great. I'm just going to use my arrow keys because I can trust that they're not. And of course, I overshot it because it's slow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Getting a little trigger happy here. Okay, I'm starting five down. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Here we go with a 37 offset for four instances. So I'm going to do 37. And I didn't want to do it yet, so I'm going to undo. Then I'm going to copy and paste an offset. I got to zoom out a little bit. A little more. Okay. Uh, duplicate, offset, duplicate, offset, duplicate, offset. And that's the last one. Uh, so we're going back to offset. I'm going to change it just to plain old 32. And I lost one because it did it. I didn't want to do it yet. Now we're going to do it. Duplicate. Go. Duplicate. Go. Duplicate. Go. Got a lot of duplicate and go. But I got to see how far I got to go. I'm going to get rid of my slices and zoom out. And whoa, and like watch down here. So I'm doing JF, I'm holding command, I'm doing duplicate layer and offset. So there it is. Now I know all my Ds are good. This is my everything. That's what that was. And then I got all these new things, which are D. Oh, I'm not ready to merge them yet. What did I figure to do? I forgot to erase the tippy tips. See, that would have been bad. So I'm going to show my slices again. I'm going to zoom into the first guy with my eraser. Now the first D is here. Yep. So I want that selected. And that's done. I go over to the next one. And that's done. And that one's done. And then we're clear. Now I'm good to merge. So I'm going to take all the D's, mix them in with everything else, merge. Okay, dokey. So when it's doing this, when I'm picturing, let me get rid of the D on my working copy so I know I'm done. I do have this space though. And I'm not really sure how I want to make this come in. I might just. I don't know, punch holes in it. I don't know how I can do it like ecstatically static. Who knows? Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll like do some kind of noise filter. Uh, give me a preview. Yeah. Static. Yeah, I'll do something like that. I'll make it. <laughs> I'll make it all kind of staticky. All right, so that's cool. We'll do that. So, um, yeah, and it can blink. It can come in like and 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 like a broken neon sign or something. All right, now we're having fun. So I might as well just move this one. 
so let's see, it comes down, bloop, 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 dripping in, liquid, 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 right, settles. Let's see it for a few. One, two, three, four would be the next, uh, like the space really falling in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, I don't know, let's say six. So 22, let's move it down to 22. And I don't need it up here anymore. So I'm just going to offset it uh, by whatever that is, 32 and 22, 704, oops, 704, sticks it where I want it after it's settled and we saw liquid for a few. And I think I'm just going to dupe it from here till the end and then just screw with each layer version manually. It's not super smart. I'm going to change this back to 32. And now that it's set, I'm going to just duplicate offset. And here we go. I'm going to get rid of my slices so I can see what's up. I'm going to zoom out, pan down. Oh, it's not that much. That's fine. So watch, I'm just going to do like I might need, I'm thinking like 30 frames. I mean, it's only a second long. It's really like 24 frames per second in playback, right? So one, two, and I might want like a good 50 frames of this. Something, something, something. All right, let's just do it manually. Speed this up. <laughs> I don't know, I just did 50, just to make it fun. Now this was my last liquid. Oh no, this is my whole shebang. Arr, that's annoying. And now I gotta do this. I gotta grab the last, I gotta grab the last liquid. Oh, you know what, I can grab a chunk. Let me grab a chunk, but I don't want the animated part. So everything next to liquid, I mean, next to the static, I know is good. And that's all merged, right? So, and what's nice about slices is that your select tool will snap to it, right? Like snap, snap. So it makes it easy. So I'm just gonna like grab anywhere here. And then, so I grab the top corner and then this will snap to this. So that's a good thing. I'm gonna copy and paste that. I know that that cube is supposed to be one pixel off, see, so that would jump. I can't have it there. Gotta make it right or else it'll be jumpy. Okay, there we go. How many did I get out of that deal? Did I get enough? Nope, not even close. Oh my God. Because it's gotta be exactly in the same location. So what I'm going to do is just overlap that. And I know that those are all correct. And I got to do it again. All right. Is that enough yet? Yes, more than enough. All right, here we go. Animating. Well, so here's where the fun begins. Let's see. All right, that is my first layer of static. Just that, I'm gonna click that. I gotta find a shortcut for this. Noise, and noise. And a Gaussian blur, it should be random, right? I'm banking on it being random. And I think I'm gonna delete a few. Staticy, I guess, or like just be intermittent. Let's try this, say, okay, can I set up shortcuts? I'd love to not have to do this a million times. I can, keyboard shortcuts, nice. Right, so let's do uh, command shift N for noise. That is already being used for a new layer. Yeah, I don't ever use that, that's fine, great. So I say, okay, right? Can you go away now? Good. Command shift N. 
Now, is that different? Yes, it is. Look, I got holes here. <laughs> this is dope. Okay, so, yeah, I don't want to have to say okay. That's a return. Okay, so I can hit return. So I got my, because my, I got to do this a bunch of times. I want to make it quick. So I click this, Command Shift N, return. Next layer, Command Shift N, return. All right, cool. I could do that. All right, here we go. And shift then return. <laughs> and then once they're all staticky looking, I'll go back in and remove a few here and there. And I'm going to see what it looks like. That'll be the next part. So I'm probably fast forwarding right now. slowly <laughs> with a deep voice is actually coming through as normal because I have sped this part up. Then again, it might just sound ridiculous. I know that it sounds totally ridiculous in real time. Speaking of ridiculous, doing this manually is just madness and I am not loving it. But, I think, oh my god, there's so many layers, and I think it might be worth it. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> I just want it done. Okay. I'm going to remove a few of these randomly, and since they're all layers, I can just kind of do it uh, randomly. You know? So, I'm going to start... At the beginning, let's say, I don't know, we'll do three frames, so you can kind of see maybe two frames, and then I'll leave two off, and then I'll let it come back for three, and then I'll do one, and then I'll do like two here. Yeah, and then like one and one and one, and three, and then two here, and one, one, I don't know, just turning these off. Going for the, going for the glitch. Oh, I need the merge, can't get rid of that. Alright, so that gives me, let me get rid of these slices. So. Yeah, I don't know. That might work, it might not work. So here's what we do. Ready? This is the important part. This is how you make things happen. Uh, this is going to require some prerequisite work in terminal because we're going to use image magic to magically make some stuff happen. Uh, so I'm going to make a new folder and this is where I want stuff to end up. So how does this work? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to crop this down to be just what we want. All right. So I know that I didn't want my first slice because that was my working slice, right? And the animation actually starts on two. So I'm going to forego my selection tool here. I'm going to exclude frame one that uh, this is the last one, right? These are just extra liquids. And I'm gonna crop. We're gonna just crop this big extra, you know, I got all this extra stuff at the bottom. So I'm gonna crop this down to just this. So you just literally do image, you know what? Yeah, I can crop. Crop first. Then you want all of your uh, layers you want to just merge them down. So I'm going to merge my visible ones. Yeah, just, no, you know what? I'm just going to flatten the image. There you go. Discard. Yes, because you know what? Let's do something smart. Let's save this before I screw something up and can't get back. Liquid. Great. Save. Yep. All right. Now I can do what I want and not worry about it. So I'm going to flatten this image. Yes, discard on layers. All right, and I got one image with these slices. So the trick here, you go to save for web, right? And this is very confusing because I've done this, I did this so many times. If you just pick your stuff and hit save right now, it looks like, oh yeah, that's what's going to do. 
Give me all those slices as image. Yeah, no, you need to actually come in here and see how it changes. You got to select all of your slices. So you just drag a selection so that they're highlighted. Now it's going to do stuff. And there's a handy dandy preset called JPEG Max. We're going to make that. It's 100% quality. It's good. We don't need to convert to this because it's a black and white image. And we're going to save it. It's going to say where. So I'm going to save it from my demo work folder with my liquid. Uh, yeah, it's going to create an images folder, subfolder in here. So all the slices that I selected, yep, okay, save. And then we go to our folder and look here, it made an images folder. And in here, it kindly took every slice and spit them out as individual things. And here comes my liquid. And <laughs> my glitchy static. Oh wait, they all look, yeah, that's, that's cool. So I really want to preview this differently, right? Here's where the terminal comes in. So I'm going to open a terminal window. Uh, the prerequisite is installing something called image magic. Nope. Image magic CK. Uh, and the prerequisite to doing that to make life easy is to install homebrew. And once you install homebrew, you can just type brew install image magic. I think you just got to look it up or I will write it up somewhere. Okay. Once you do image magic, it's basically a bunch of image tools uh, that are command line driven. And the fun one we're going to use is this convert. Now I just have a history because I've been doing this so I can just up, I can use the up arrow and uh, bring up previous stuff. And that's convenient because then I can just edit that a little bit and then I'm good to go. Uh, so here's the steps. First, I want to preview this. I'm going to make it a GIF so I can physically watch it, do it. Um, the images folder is where I want to be, right? Right now I'm just in my home directory. So I'm going to CD to change directory and I'm just going to go to this folder. That's where I want to be. Boom. That's where I am. And, you know, if you take a list, you can see these are all the files that are in here. So great. I'm in the right spot. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to first use convert. Here's one. Okay. So convert is the tool and it's going to add a delay instead of instantly it's going to add i don't know if this is frames i think this is 3.5 frames per second or something this is like the speed it's the speed of the gif so if you, if this were set to 5 it's a delay so the a higher number is a slower gif uh and i found that 3.5 is pretty close to what my oled display speed looks like when i'm running profi os 6.7 blah 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 anyway so you run uh convert delay and then this is a wild card so you're gonna basically make a gif for me out of all the bmp files okay so here's a problem bmp files do i have bmp files no i have jpeg files okay well i can't do that one yet First step, prerequisite number 20,000, uh, you're going to use this tool called Mogrify. And all it does is convert from one format to another. So I want to convert to a format of BMP all, see this is a wildcard, all files that are whatever name that end in .jpg. Okay, so I do that. And now if we watch over here, and my folder, you see now I got a bunch of BMP files. I got the version that's the JPEG and it made me a version of BMP for all of them. Okay. At this point, I could go through and delete all these JPEGs. I do not need to do that. I'm just going to skip right to the convert to a GIF. And this is just to preview it. I'm still not even making it for the uh, display file yet. 
just want to see what it looks like. So I might want to change the, the frequency of the glitching of the static, you know, how, which ones I deleted and, you know, I hit those random layers. I might want to mix that up. I got to see how it looks before I, you know, bother going further. Okay. So take all my BMPs and convert them to, but I'm not, I'm lost my wild card here. And make a movie called movie.gif out of them. Okay. So it does that. And we go to our folder and we find movie GIF. Hey, look at that. Oh my God. That is so exactly what I freaking wanted it to look like. It's amazing when it comes out and you're like, dude, that is awesome. So I am going to roll with that. And um, <laughs> we're going to make that because I think that looks perfect. That is pretty freaking dope. All right. So next, we've converted our BMPs into a GIF. That was just for previewing and for like sharing with your friends and be like, check out this freaking cool thing I just did. Um, the real deal is we need to make it a... Okay. The, the way Profi OS shows these files... If you give it a BMP file, yeah, you know, like any of these, these are just animated. See how it's like, oh, this this is a Graflex that breaks, you know? You just stack frames on top of each other. If you save them as a single BMP file like this, when it shows it, it's going to loop it. Uh, and it's going to be inverse color and stuff. See, and then the loop duration is a setting you put in your fonts config.ini file, right? And you set your, in milliseconds, how many seconds you want to loop. There are defaults, like, you know, five seconds for a font. Let's say I don't want it to loop. I'm going to make it a PBM file, right? So this is a PBM, and it just plays it once, and it's playing it in the color that you're seeing it's not inverse i just like pbm because i don't know sometimes looping looks weird it's doing it and then like it stops mid animation i, I don't know it's totally up to you i am going for a play once through thing so that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a pbm not a stacked bmp that loops so here's the command to convert to pbm we are going to say our source so first of all, we want this monochrome flag in here to strip out any color information. Uh, when I made this new file, uh, I chose grayscale and chose 8-bit. For some reason, Photoshop doesn't want to give me 1-bit, which is just black and white. Uh, with 8-bit, you can have some gradients and dithering, and you don't want that on your screen. It might work out, but generally you want 1-bit per pixel monochrome. Um, so I couldn't get that straight out of Photoshop. So we go with a monochrome switch on the command. And then we just do wildcard, take all the BMPs, which I have in the folder now, and spit them out into a PBM file. So this is my source. I want all the BMPs. And this is my destination font. PBM. So I say go, make it. Hey look, font PBM. Now it doesn't look like much and I can't see anything because it's going to kind of just look like a still image. But if I take this and I stick it in a font and I switch to that font, you know, I put it on my SD card and then switch to the font, it's going to play. If you want to save this as a looping BMP, you do that with the convert command again. However, I've learned a couple things since I'm inserting this in the edit. Uh, you still use convert. We're gonna use the append switch. The append will make them stack um, like we want. Still gonna throw the monochrome flag, but I've learned that doesn't really seem to work, at least not on Mac Finder preview, and the image doesn't seem to be right. So we're gonna put that on, but we're gonna have to massage it a little in MS Paint. 
uh, which I'll get to in a minute. And I've learned that the wild cards do not need to be question marks, and the number of digits here doesn't have to matter because we can just say all BMPs get converted with a stack in a monochrome to a file named font BMP. So that'll work. And it gives me this. But the problem I'm having here is you see this just spinning? I, I, it, the preview isn't happy. It sees it as a Windows bitmap image, but there's something screwy about it. So this is, this is what I found works. You can go to jspaint.app. It gives you an online JavaScript uh, MS Paint, which is great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this file. And here it is. Now it's seeing it. And like I said, we need to invert the colors. So you go to image invert colors. And when you go to save as you get to choose, see, this is part of the problem. It probably thinks it's a 24 bit, but it was saved as an eight bit and it's confused. So we're going to just mush it down to black and white monochrome bitmap, one bit per pixel. I'm going to name it font. That's fine. Where do you want to save it in the same place? Do you want to overwrite this? Yes. So I do that and it downloads it and ta-da, look. Now it shows up as a stacked inverted BMP file. So this is now good to go in the font folder and this would, uh, this would loop. Okay, so here's what the Play One's PBM looks like. Ta-da. And one more time for fun. Nice.